TV TV, episode nine, coming to you from the Sands Torquay. On this show, we're joined by Australia's number one female poker player, Jackie Glazier, and tour professional, Jared Lyle. Our special guests will battle it out on the golf course and poker table, plus Josh Lancaster will help you sharpen up your game with a pro tip. So I think when I bet on the on the turn, which is the fourth card that comes yeah. out, you when you call you need to decide what card why you're calling. Like, yeah, right, for, okay. like what are you beating at this point? I'll have to talk to the dealer, I think. <laughs> but <laughs> if you sure. got the ace it would be bad because then yeah, I'd have, have aces. Well. I'd have aces and eights. Yeah. Yeah. I call. It's a terrible card for me. So, so who won that? Uh, you win that. So at this point, when I bet, yeah. I've got two pair already. Yeah. And then when this queen comes out, now my two pairs are queens with the six. Yeah. So it cancels out my third pair. I don't get it. Right. And now I've got queens, so queens, two sixes, and then I've just got the eight. Yeah. But you've got queens, two sixes, and you can use this card yeah, in, ah, in poker games. right, so, so I win. You do. See how excited he is about this? Oh, uh, I'm just trying to get my <laughs> poker face right. right. I'm just gonna fold this hand and give you this chip. Because this is what's called like the worst hand in poker, I would think. <laughs> it's not going away. Oh, that's an interesting card. I'm all in. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> nice hand, nice try. Stick to golf. <laughs> You're gonna be saying the same thing to me out on the course. So. <laughs> Jackie, stick to poker. <laughs> I think our skill levels are about the same, like your poker skill levels and my golf skill levels. Hey, I've won a hand before, I'm going alright. Well, I can hit a shot now and then. Yeah. Well you must hit a win there. What was it? The Sir Dallas Brooks? <laughs> Alright, I've had enough of this $2, $5 <laughs> stuff. Let's uh, let's pump it up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to raise to 600. Right, okay. Well, I'll call you then. You're a little short there. Oh, I am too. Shit. See, he's trying to cheat already. I'm a golf pro. <laughs> <laughs> a thousand. All right. All right, well, I'm all in. I wasn't expecting you to do that though. Well, if you're all in, I'm all in too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright. I Damn feel good. Either. I've got a full house. Well, I've got three tens. <laughs> <laughs> That's alright. That's a cooler hand. You have to probably go with that hand. Yeah, well, I've got. Yeah, you can't really flop much better. No. How many outs would Jared have here? Um, well, he can't really catch a flush anymore because I've already got a full house, which will beat the flush. Uh, he could get a ten for quads. Oh. I either need a king of, of spades, spades yeah. or a ten yeah. for me to just clean up and run around the table fist pumping and yeah. carrying on because I just knocked you out. Well, you did because I had more chips than you, but oh, that's, that's right. all good. <laughs> but then I'd have more chips than you anyway, so yeah. then I'd be yeah. more than justified you, to run around the table yes, like a crazy man. Yes, you definitely run around the table. Perfect. <laughs> Alright, so I'm sitting here wishing and hoping for a 10 or a king of spades. Don't do it. 10 or a king of spades. Don't do it. 10 or a king of... Oh, yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, you guys set this up. That's terrible. Uh, chips, please. <laughs>
I win off you in poker? 1.5 million. All right, well, I'll play you three holes for one million dollars. You win your money back, <laughs> and I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you two shots a hole. I think you should be more worried about being beaten by a girl. Sadly, I'd love to say that's never happened before, but it has. So I'm not too worried about that. <laughs> so you're there for zero, and I'll be up there for. Two. I'm in a bit of trouble. Now you're in trouble. If you happen to dismiss yours, <laughs> not really like it, is it? Um, it is. It is likely, but not today. I think the only thing that would make it fair is if I played as a part five. Well, that's what about? Yeah, okay, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll play as a part four. One forty-four, Lucy. Do you think an eight? What? Do you think eight iron? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Good call, darling. Not free. Trouble, are we? Yeah, I should have taken an unplayable. I'm just way too stubborn. <laughs> so, well, we're all square. Why don't we make this one sub there? Alright. Yeah. I think that this is your favourite hole in the course, and I think that you might be cheating slightly. No, I'll tell you why I don't like this hole. Because I play up plus five here. Yep. This is one of the holes I've actually got to give a shot back. Okay. So if I have three, then that means I've had a net four. All right. So I'm essentially giving you three shots on this one. That's very dirty. What's You know, if you make this part, Really? Yeah. Oh yeah! <laughs> well done. Yeah. We should swap jobs. No. <laughs> no, I think I'll stick with golf and I think in all honesty you should stick with poker. Alright, fair enough. So for GV TV sitting here with Jackie Glazier. Australia's number one female poker player and recent golf tragic. Jackie, thanks for joining us today. <laughs> thanks for having me. And uh, you are a great poker player. You've had some, some professional wins. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got into poker and then started playing on the professional tours. Well, um, it actually started, I grew up playing a lot of cards with my grandparents and um, just what we used to do on school holidays a lot. And we used to go to RSL clubs and play Euchre or 500. And I just always have been competitive into sports and those sorts of things. And then um, my husband was invited to a home game with mates, you know, as you do on a you know Saturday night or whatever. And um, when he told me he was invited, I was like, oh, cool, that would be fun. And he's like, oh, no girls are invited. And I'm like, why not? And then, um, yeah, they said they didn't want girls there, but I kept pestering them, pestering them to let me play. And every week he would go, I would look up on the internet and, and work out how to play this game, which was Texas Hold'em poker, which wasn't the form of poker I grew up playing. I'd played a lot of draw poker with my grandparents and um, learn all the rules. And then finally they accepted my $20 and I could come and play. And um, yeah, I didn't win that match, but that, that tournament game. But um, yeah, just from there, I was hooked on the game and loved it, loved the competitive side of it and, and a lot of the thought processes behind the game and um, fell in love with it. And then just started playing more and more until I eventually turned full time. So tell us a little bit about some of your biggest achievements playing poker. So I suppose um, I've had a lot of success both here and um, overseas, but probably the pinnacle of my career was winning a World Series of Poker Bracelet in, I won one in Europe in Paris. 
and um, I've come a close second in a 3K event in, um, in Vegas as well and then I finished a, about 31st in the main event in 2012 I think it was so yeah had a few successes and, and other wins along the way as well it's been a consistent run. And doing my research uh, via YouTube um, before this interview, I saw that uh, you actually played in uh, the Caesars Cup, the Poker Caesars Cup, which I've been told is the equivalent to uh, uh, golf's version of uh, the Ryder Cup. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that event that you played in? Yeah, so that's an invitational event um, that they hold, which is uh, Asia Pacific made up a team and then there was a European team and then an American team. and. Um, those players were invited to come and we, we played against each other in different styles of format, um, heads up or teams and, and uh, yeah, it was really fun. And uh, were there any special uh, personalities or identities that people might recognise you playing with uh, at that particular event? Yes, yeah, so uh, Joe Hashem firstly was part of the team, which he has won the main event, the World Series main event before. I suppose he's probably Australia's most identifiable poker player. And Shane Warne was also on the team as well, which is you know great to play with such a legend like him as well. And you played alongside Warney. Yeah, so the format, um, part of the tournament that I was involved in, um, Shane and I were partners, so we took it in turns to play hands and yeah, it was a, a lot of fun. And we just saw you playing a little bit of poker earlier with uh, Jared Lyle. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we saw some of the reads that you were trying to get off, off Jared. Um, just talk us through a little bit how you, I suppose, break down um, other players or opponents' um, twitches or, or, or their gives, if you like. Sure, I think there's a big misconception about poker and about that it's all about what cards you, you have and what hand you make, but pretty much a, a lot of the strength um, in my game comes from determining whether my opponent is feeling comfortable or you know feeling really good about their hand and I have to look at them and decide you know how they're feeling with as each card comes out or the flop comes out and yeah there was a hand there where I just I just I don't know what it was he did but I just didn't believe him so yeah I picked off his bluff but yeah ultimately he ended up being the winner. <laughs> Now tell us about your golf um, journey so far. When did you start and, and how did you get into the game? Yeah, so my husband's played for a long time and um, I'll be honest, I think the game was never that appealing to me. I found that maybe um, the game felt a little bit stuffy to me and, and the rules and regulations around it, but I feel like it's really relaxed a lot over the last couple of years. And um, I've seen a lot more girl girl players with a bit more personality coming out and you know the clothing they're wearing is a little bit cooler but um, it actually all started um, I've actually been playing for less than two years um, and Tiffany Cherry pretty much introduced me to the game she had a golf day called Token Blokes where um, each group um, had at least two females in the group which is why we call it Token Blokes because normally the girls the token on the golf course and um, she invited me to come and play and um, about a month later I decided I might you know get out on the golf course of, on my own and or with Jamie and we decided I'd get a handicap in case I wanted you know to play a few little you know country tournaments or just you know hack around and yeah I just fell in love with it. So you've only been playing for two years but uh, last December 2014 you're actually uh, a winner along with the, your partner, Steve, from Settlers Run yeah. in the Sir Dallas Brooks. Um, it was six days of golf. Talk us through what that victory was like and where does it rate amongst uh, your victories in uh, poker as well? Yeah, so that was, that was funny because um, Steve Kent, who's the pro at Settlers Run, he approached me and asked me if I'd play in this event with him and I had never heard of it and I'd never played in a golf tournament before. And, I think at that point I'd been playing for maybe 11 months or 10 months and I was like why does he want to play with me but um, I didn't realise it was handicap based as well and um, yeah we had out, headed out and played um, one day and then he's like oh we got through so we've got to come back tomorrow and I was like oh okay so when we went out the next day and he's like we've got to come back again the next day and this went on for I think five or six days and I'm like this is like crazy. I, I mean, I get out on the course maybe if I'm lucky once a week, so this was a lot of golf for a, a, a new sort of beginner player. 
And um, yeah, I don't know how it happened, but we got to the last game. It's like this is if we win this match, we win. Um, yeah, was, I think it was a lot more pressure on me than I would find in a poker tournament, especially having a teammate that was, you know, relying on what I was doing as well. Whereas, you know, in poker, it's pretty much myself, you know, at the end of it. Um, but yeah, it was really exciting to win, and um, yeah, I suppose it's it's different to a poker tournament because it's a little bit more fun for me. But yeah, it was awesome to win the first tournament I ever played in. And you'll be back to defend in 2015. Yes, for sure. We're we're teaming up, and um, my husband's actually going to team up with his wife as well. So <laughs> we'll see. There could be fireworks if we have to play each other in match play. I think. Well, thanks for joining us today on GVTV, Jackie, and good luck defending your Sir Dallas Brooks <laughs> yes. title. Yes, fingers crossed. Yeah. For GVTV, sitting here with Jared Lyle at the Sands Torquay. Jared, thanks for joining us today. Pleasure, mate. It's good to be here. Tell us a little bit about uh, what you've been up to the last couple of months. Um... I have been working out, mate. I've been in the gym most days and uh, trying to get get a little bit fitter and stronger and stuff. Obviously, you know, my golf wasn't quite going to plan in the States earlier this year, so I decided to, to come home, take care of some doctor's things that I needed to take care of, and then um, try and get, get fitter and stronger because that's one thing that I noticed, you know, after being out for two and a half years, coming back, there's a lot of guys that are, you know, they're, they're more athletes now. In, uh, in the world of golf, so you sort of got to got to go with the times, and um, you know it's not something that I've ever really said that to to anybody that I'm going to go to the gym, but uh, I've been in there. And have you seen some marked improvements in your your overall overall uh, well being? Yeah, I think so. I think um, you know I don't get as tired at the end of the day now. Um, you know that's something that I've after all my treatments and things I've I've had to deal with. Um, you know, I kind of make it to about 8.30 at night now instead of 8 o'clock where I'm, I'm exhausted. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot better. The, golf, the golf's getting better too. Like, I'm getting a bit stronger. I'm hitting the ball a little bit further. So it's, you know, and I think the main thing is just the endurance is, is a, big, uh, a big positive sort of coming out of all the gym work. A couple more months left in 2015. Uh, what are you going to be doing for those, those remaining months? Uh, mate, it's going to be actually very busy. I'm, I'm heading back to the States to, um, to play the Fries.com event. So that'll be the first one on the 15-16 the schedule for the PGO Tour. I'll play that one, um, then I'll try and get into Vegas for the, the Shriners Hospital tournament there, and then I'll play the Sanderson Farms. And then I'll come home and do, at the moment, it looks like I can only do the Australian Open and the Australian PGA. So um, the Aussie Masters is a little bit of a, a question mark aside beside that one because it's conflicting against the tournament in the PGA. So um, because it's conflicting, I won't be able to do the Masters. I'd have to go and do the, the one on the PGA Tour. So it's sort of, it'll be a shame that if I don't get to do it, obviously being in, in Melbourne and back at Huntingdale would be awesome to go back there. But, uh, you know, I guess you've got to think of the, the big picture. And, and for me, that's obviously the PGA Tour. So it'll be unfortunate that I might not be able to play. And uh, still enjoying the lifestyle down here in Torquay? Mate, it's fantastic. You know, we've got a cracking day today. And, you know, Lucy, my daughter, and I went out to the, the playground this morning and then went and had a little little sneaky treat down at the bakery. So it's, uh, you know, it's nice just to be able to do that and, and walk along the beach and just, you know, breathe in some fresh air. And uh, we've seen Dash Day, Jason's uh, son, in the, the media a lot uh, the last last couple of months. Um, something that, that your little girl, Lucy, uh, has probably been a little bit accustomed to as well. Uh, how is she doing these days? Mate, she's good. She's doing really well. She comes out every now and then and drives a golf cart around with me and plays a bit of golf. And, you know, she's three years old and people say to me all the time, you're going to put a golf club in her hand. She's got some clubs at home. I'm not going to force her into it. You know, if she wants to play golf, she can play golf. If she wants to play netball, she can do that. So whatever she chooses, mate, is, is fine with me. So it's, uh, you know, it's nice just to, to have her around and and come out and keep me company. Great. Jared, thanks for joining us today and uh, good luck for your return on uh, in America. And also we'll see you back here for some of the Australian Aussie summer events. Perfect, mate, thank you. Hi, my name's Josh Lancaster, Teach Professional at the Sands Torquay. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about chipping and just one common mistake a lot of people make when they're around Greenside area. 
So usually a lot of people get really nervous and try and flick at their shot to try and get the ball going to the hole. So what we want to try and do is really eliminate that sort of action. Um, I'll show you now. Pretty much when you people chip, they use a lot of wrist and they'll either stop on it and try and jab at the ball to get it going. This is really sort of going to hinder your shot. So what you want to try and do is maintain a nice firm action and keep your wrist out of it, no wrist at all. So one way to try and combat that is rather than gripping it how you normally do, simply grip it like you would putting. What this will do, eliminate wrist action and create and promote much firmer sort of stroke and contact onto the ball as I'll demonstrate now. So. So you set up how you normally would. So obviously we're a bit close to the ball. Get down, right down the bottom of the grip, holding your grip like your putter, like your grip. And then from there, just simply swing out it. Keep your hands nice and firm. And then off to the hole. So practicing that way will pretty much promote nice sort of action and you won't be susceptible to using a lot of wrists. So try it at home and see how you go. Hi ladies, I'm Jackie Glazier. If you've ever thought about getting out there and starting golf, October is the perfect month to do it. Check out golfmonth.com.au and find the specials in your area. Thanks for watching and be sure to keep an eye out throughout October for Golf Month activities near you. Visit golfmonth.com.au for all the details.